um, just a little bit of background about you. You qualified as a doctor when yes. you were 20, 25 years 25, old. And you took a year off. Yes, I, uh, after metric, uh, you know, when you're in metric and you're good with science subjects, you, you kind of like confuse what you want to do. So I was very good with chemistry, so I thought that meant I, I, I wanted to be a chemical engineer. So I worked for a mining company, went you underground, went to the smelters. It was you went down the mines. Whereabouts were the <laughs> mines? I mean, Rustenberg. Rustenberg. It, it was still called JCI. <laughs> <laughs> JCI. And it was a bit rough in those days. It was still very rough. I worked for Precious Metal. I was in Northam. Yeah. It was lovely. Yeah, it was quite lovely. So it must have been like you coming from a university and everything, going uh, with a yeah, bunch I was of guys. Like, yeah, well, guys, this you is good. I mean, you're fresh from a trick. You get paid for staying away from home and for... <laughs> Uh, fooling around at work, <laughs> <laughs> but that was lovely. And then, of course, after that, uh, I, I, I got a, a bursary to study medicine, and I, I never looked back. So if you took me back all those years, I'll, I'll do medicine all over again. What did they teach you? I mean, at the mines. Yeah. Oh no, just to crawl <laughs> in long tunnels. <laughs> and I'm told also, if you see a snake, you follow it. Isn't that right? Because it's going <laughs> to be a, a fall a, of ground. Urban legend. Just, just, just don't follow the snakes. It's only legend. Them. Yeah, it's only legend. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I would have followed a lot of them. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, so um, uh, and when did you qualify as a uh, robotic uh, urologist? Th this year, actually, I got certified only around May this year. Uh, that took a, a little bit of a training locally. Uh, it's almost like pilot training. You spend a lot of time with the simulator working on a simulator, taking online exams. And then uh, once you've met the minimum criteria, then you get sent off to one of the international uh, centers uh, to go take more exams, more practicals, and then you come back and you start working with somebody called a proctor. Uh, they oversee what you kind of like do, walk you through this, make sure you do not kill people. Uh, there's no room for error. If, if you're in theater, you don't want to be told, oops. And then at some point they think, ah, you're kind of like good enough to be left alone and they leave you alone but watching from a distance and they slowly move away from you and they so disappear. where is this, uh, you know, how groundbreaking is this, this robotics uh, work that you're doing? I mean, everyone's talking about the fourth industrial revolution. Ab mm. You're dealing with it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, Africa, South Africa, we're pioneering in Africa but in the world we are far behind. Uh, robotics, the Da Vinci uh, robotic uh, uh, operating system, which is what I qualified to use, has been in around since 1990. Uh, Just so give us an idea of the, the jump in. Say if you went in for the same operation like yes. 10 years ago and yes. compared to now. I mean, just give me a basic idea. Okay. Uh, what we would have done a couple of years back, not even 10 years ago, in <laughs> South Africa, only about 2013, that's when we got our first robot at Urology Hospital. Prior to that, uh, at least there was something still called laparoscopy, which meant uh, we did uh, pinhole surgery, but now you had to operate sticks with mm. your own hand. So you held them with your own hand and you work with the sticks. Or just before that, it meant we took a knife, made a nice big cut on your body, and tried to reach sometimes very narrow cramped spaces to do this delicate surgery, which if you end up in just wrong planes and wrong tunnels, you can end up with rather adverse effects, which are not desirable. So now come the laparoscopy and the robotics, now we can reach deep little areas, difficult corners, and perform excellent surgery, sitting very nicely and comfortable like I'm sitting here. Really? Yeah, you're kind of like sitting down, you're holding at the little console, which is what we call the screen that you're looking in. The robot is attached to the patient there, there are a couple of monitors, and all what you're doing is like you're playing PlayStation, and you are performing the op, <laughs> and you are looking through these 3D images, which you can magnify, Zoom in, zoom out, flip the pictures, rotate it. It's like you... And where's it, it going? Fun. Where's the next step? You say you're playing PlayStation, What's the, you don't even have to be there. I don't know, what's the next step? The next step will be limited by how fast our connectivity is. The, 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 all this robotic surgery has got a potential and an ability for you to can do off this, the, the, the space surgery. But uh, from the time you execute the command to the time that the robot carries it out, if there is a lag, it's going to be a problem, and that's still what is being developed, even worldwide. But eventually, one will be sitting somewhere here and performing a surgery on a patient in Ghana, being in South Africa. That's probably where we're going. And it's not too far. And Give and us I 5G. I mean, exactly. <laughs> but then again, you're saying just 2013, everything was different. I we, mean, we, Yes, we, we only have the robot in South Africa from around that. The urology hospital first acquired the, they first, they acquired the first robotics, but all the other big uh, medical companies in South Africa quickly followed suit. 
to the best of my knowledge, there is on five operational robots and one training robot in the country right now. Two in Houghton, two in Cape Town, and one in Port Elizabeth. And that's, that's what we have, yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, should I say a minor turned uh, robotic <laughs> surgeon? Thank you very much for sharing your story with me. That was Dr. Kabo.